Well, hello there, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to week number 30 of the Wigiwam Get Your Property Questions Answered a weekly webinar. I hope you're doing really, really well right now. And for anybody who's been keeping abreast of what's been going on in the uh, property market nationally and indeed locally, you'll definitely have noticed that there's certainly been some changes uh, in how things are performing uh, now compared to where we were probably this time last year. And uh, what I want to highlight today in, in this week's webinar is that there are uh, many, many factors that go into what actually happens with the house market. Uh, but one of the biggest factors of all is overall consumer confidence in uh, not just the property market itself, but also their ability to uh, hold a job or keep a job or, or keep a salary, should I say, and an income coming in which transpires towards uh, you know, mortgage affordability. And this is one of the interesting things that happened when you reflect on the market that happened in 2020, when the pandemic struck and companies were closing down and people weren't be allowed to go to work. And for then, you know, one would have expected that consumer confidence would have dipped at that point uh, when you know the people were worried whether or not they were going to have a job, whether or not they were going to you know have a, a have a future to go back to work and all the rest of it, and it seemed very odd to me that the market reacted almost completely the opposite way. Now, whether that was as a result of the government putting a whole bunch of funny money into the system and propping everything up um, during the course of that uh, pandemic, I'm not saying that wasn't the right call or the wrong call, but the point is that happened and. I think at that point, the market reacted very differently to the way it should have reacted and started to you know, go like the clappers and skyrocket and, and agents were selling properties without even need to, needing to market them in some cases, but selling them for over the asking price, which was incredible. And where we are now coming into sort of June uh, 2023, that market looks very, very different following uh, not just the impact of the mini budget last year, um, but I think what has happened is this interest rate uh, hike has uh, continued and continued and continued, and that is now making buyers uh, very, very nervous. And it's the buyer's mentality of, you know, can I afford to sign up to this expensive mortgage, which, you know, might be 4% or it might be 6% or it might be 8% or more. That makes a massive difference to my monthly uh, outgoings, my monthly payments, et cetera. And I think that is what's bringing a sense of caution to the marketplace right now. So a lot of what's in the marketplace at the moment is, um, I think, largely out of estate agents' hands as far as whether or not we're going to head into a recession. I mean, we, we were told that you know inflation was transi transitory, weren't we? We were told that, that inflation's transitory. Don't worry, it's going to go away. Um, and yet everybody's been impacted by the cost of living crisis. Uh, in, inflation has hit our utility bills and all the rest of it, or so we're told, or it might be the war in re Ukraine, we're not really sure. Um, but, you know, what's happening is that people are ultimately being put under more and more pressure. And I, I saw this happening in sort of 2007, 2008, 2009, where, you know, unfortunately, there's a, there's a uh, standard where most people's salaries are relatively fixed. And their purchasing power is eroded, or their your sort of expendable cash at the end of every month is is eroded by the increasing costs of their livelihood, such as their utility bills, the cost of putting fuel in the car, public transport costs going up, food costs going up, clothing costs going up. Um, you know, all of this makes an impact. And when your wages aren't rising, uh, there comes a point where people go, "Do you know what? We've got less disposable income at the end of every month. We can't really afford." Uh, a mortgage running at six, seven, eight percent, uh, and we're just going to sit on our hands and wait to see what happens. And when that confidence goes, ladies and gentlemen, that I think is the biggest indicator that we may be heading into a recession. And you know, there is going to be a, a much, much, much tougher market ahead. Um, and and please, please, please don't think that I'm sitting here saying this. I'm I'm spouting off, and I'm I'm not. Um, you know, helping people by talking the market down. But we all know that the market goes in cycles. We all know that, you know, since sort of 2008, that uh, 2009, the market has actually been reasonably good. And we've had two very, very intense years. And actually, we're going to have to now, collectively, as an industry, weather the storm as we go through the tougher times. Um, but my concern for many uh, agents and conveyancers and other property professionals is, you know, have you got a risk plan in place? 
that will enable you to weather the storm through this transition period and you know will your business be left standing and i and i genuinely think that this is the time when agents and conveyancers and other property professionals need to be taking a radical look at their business and uh, assessing whether or not uh you know they can afford some of the luxuries that they have in their business right now you know is it time to look at what's happening with the car hire is it time to look at what's happening with your uh, utility bills for example in your office is it time to look at working from home as a more uh, substantive arrangement you know is it even time to look at uh, the amount that's being spent on portals every single month uh, because i think this will have a big big impact on people's businesses and the unfortunate part about it is if uh, you know, you're sitting there thinking, oh, don't worry, you know, it'll turn around, the market will turn around, or you believe what the papers are telling you that it's, it's just a blip, it's just a blip. Then the unfortunate part about it is, is that you lose a lot of ground you, that you might have two, three, four, five, six months before you really start to feel the pinch in your business. But if you don't plan for it now, you're going to ultimately face much harder times as, as things unfold. And that's when, you know, business owners get quite jumpy and they start making rash decisions because, you know, they need to do something now. Um, I once worked with a firm of uh, civil engineers, actually, that were going through a, a very tight cash flow period because they hadn't planned ahead. They hadn't um, correctly invoiced for the work that they'd been doing. They were leaving a lot of money sat in other people's bank accounts. And what happens when people get into that position of, uh, you know, things that that the financial grip is tightening around the firm, they then make very rash decisions. And these guys were selling off uh, plant and, and equipment and machinery to try and make payroll. They were selling it for less than it was worth, just dumping it to try and get some cash in the bank. And unfortunately, it just creates this spiral uh, downwards, which then ultimately leads to the business failing. And you know, it, it's it's not my wish to to wish this upon anybody at all in the property industry. You know, I, I hope my uh, genuine enthusiasm for the industry comes across and that we have a genuine desire to help and support and you know guide as many agents and, and solicitors and other property professionals through this uh, what I think will be a very very difficult time if you ask me personally and you know we, we do that through these you know weekly webinars we also do that through you know the content that we put out on our blogs and our websites uh, you know we've got the estate agents trilogy book series which I think is going to be invaluable to help people and agents go through this uh, transition period. Uh, but, you know, as I said to somebody the other day on um, social media, it's a real problem for the business if somebody outside of the business cares more about it than the business owner. And, you know, I see a lot of complaints um, today about, you know, the cost of everything going up and all the rest of it. But we have a choice as the client, as the consumer of that particular product or service to actually make a different choice okay so i just want to leave you with that thought guys i think it, it, you know we have to keep a close eye on consumer confidence i think it is weakening right now which is what's affecting the marketplace more than we thought it probably would and you know we're here to help and support as much as we possibly can for those agents that are facing difficult times if you want to talk if you want to blow off steam if you're looking at viable alternatives for your business there's a whole bunch of stuff going on behind the scenes in wigiwam that i think you need to plug into and be part of but, you know, I think it's the old saying, isn't it? We can lead a horse to water, but we can't make it drink. And it's the same for business owners. You know, we, we've got the skills and tools to help you. But, um, you know, you need to reach out to us in order to take advantage of that. Is that fair to say? So uh, just wanted to touch on that, first of all, guys, before we go into this week's uh, questions. Uh, but I'll kick off now with question number one, which has come in here from Stacey. Hi there, Stacey. Thank you for being part of the amazing Wiggy Wang community. Uh, and Stacey's question is uh, my property has been on the market for months with no offers uh, it's a good house which is not far from the local school and i think we priced it competitively but for some reason it's not selling uh, what can we do to make it more attractive to buyers and finally move home well that's a great question stacy and thank you for uh, sending that one in um look I, this is a uh a, a more common theme that we're going to see for many people who have you know perhaps put their house on the market in the course of the last 12 months and at the time of putting their house on the market the market conditions have actually changed and this can you know work for and against you depending upon whether the market's going up or whether the market's coming down right and uh you haven't said where you are in the country stacy right now but the, the key point to remember is that you know in any market um you know anything will sell 
depending upon the price okay so what you're effectively doing you're, you're offering something that has value i.e a home and hopefully it's a home in a good condition in a reasonable area and you're offering that for a certain price but what you've got to do is tempt somebody to go do you know what i'm prepared to commit to paying this much for that particular home and i'm prepared to saddle myself with this much of a mortgage in order to be able to buy it right and that may or may not work for most buyers in the marketplace. Um, now, what do I mean by that? Well, it comes down to when the market changes, okay, this is where a lot of people who've been preparing for uh, market shifts actually start to capitalize because if they're cash buyers, they generally tend to step into the marketplace and have more choice because there's less buyers, okay? And what's happened in your situation, Stacey, is that you know your property's been for sale for a while. Um, the market conditions have changed. It's been put out to the list of buyers that I presume the estate agent thought they had at the time when they came to see you. And unfortunately, that hasn't uh, hit the right note with them, or they've just decided to sit on their hands because of all the uncertainty in the marketplace at the moment. So you've now got to do something to attract buyers to you. Uh, and that might be looking at the front of the property or the curb appeal of the property, as I've talked about in previous videos. Does it look attractive? Does it look clean and tidy? And does it look tempting enough to get people to, you know, get out of their car and actually come in and have a look at the property rather than driving past it from the outside and deciding that they don't like it? Uh, that's the first point to say. The second point is what can you do to, to generate more interest? And a lot of people will go for a price reduction. I would suggest that it's actually, before you do that, worth going back to talk to you know, two or three other agents in your area and ask them for their professional opinion. Now, the reason we do that is, um, you know, for, for some reason, you know, when it comes to selling properties, you can put your house up for sale with one agent and then have no luck for six months and then switch agents and they'll sell it within a week. Why? Who knows? It could be the, you know, the estate agent gods are feeling more favorable towards one agent than another. But you, you know, the point is, the, the temptation is for many agents to just cut the price and you know that will help to, to tempt a buyer across the threshold which is true and it does work but the other thing is to bear in mind is that sometimes a property on a market with a local agent can begin to look a bit stale and you know so what goes on behind the scenes might might be uh, in that particular agent's office that they've got you know a little bit frustrated with not being able to sell it. Um, you know, they're not perhaps putting as much effort into the to the sale of the property as they perhaps should do or the marketing of the property because if they're on a no sale, no fee basis and they've been running up expenses trying to advertise the property and it hasn't sold, then, you know, you've got a bit of a problem there in terms of actually the motivation of the agent to sell it. So it could be that a more motivated agent comes on board and they decide that they, they can actually sell the property, push it out to the list and get it sold. Uh, the, the second thing you might want to think about with regards to changing agents might be to go for a dual or multi-agency approach rather than just one agent in your area, okay? And that can be really quite um, an invigorative process because then they are competing against one another in order to try and find the right buyer for your particular property. So that's what I would look at doing myself, Stacey. Uh, don't just go to the go to a price reductions uh, until you've explored that other uh, avenue of talking to two or three other agents in your local area, get their feedback, uh, and then make a, a decision on which way to go. And if you want some more feedback on that, uh, again, you know, come back, come back and ask me another question. I'll be happy to give you some input into that as well. So wishing you all the best of luck with that, Stacey. If there's anything else we can do, uh, let me know. Final thought. You might want to get into Home Buyer Secrets, get yourself a copy of that. Uh, that will guide you through a little bit more of the moving minefield, including uh, how to deal with situations like you've just outlined as well. All right, so good luck, Stacey. Uh, wish you the best of luck and let us know if we can do anything else to help you. All right, moving on. Question number two comes in here from Ian. Uh, hi there, Ian. Thank you for your question and for being part of the amazing WiggyWam community. So Ian's question is, uh, what are your thoughts on the latest uh, RM, I presume that's right move price hikes? Um, I'm absolutely my wits end, having dealt with all the challenges of the last few years and the cost of living crisis, which has impacted everyone in our office and having to help people out financially. Uh, for RM to hike their fees by nearly 20% this year doesn't sit well with me, but I honestly feel tied into using them. Uh, is there any way I can detach them from my business? 
Okay, and well, thanks for the question. And uh, you have my full um, empathy. Uh, let's put it that way. I won't say sympathy, but you do have my full empathy uh, in this situation because I am seeing um, traditionally, as we do every every year uh, about this time of the year, similar kind of complaints on social media and, and questions of that nature, saying, you know, this has happened. This is this has impacted my business again. Uh, I feel like they're draining more money out of my bank account, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, but then all this hullabaloo dies down and, you know, agents actually don't make any changes. And, and to me, it's a real mystery as to why more agents aren't thinking like you, Ian, and why they're not actually saying, do you know what? If I look at my customer, customer experience, you know, I am the customer who's paying for it. I'm giving my priceless content to them to display on their site every single month. So actually they probably need me a bit more than I need them. And, you know, if I'm truthful with myself, I need to look at the quality of the leads that I'm actually getting from them and how much that actually converts to business. Now, I forget whether it, uh, I think it's either volume one or volume two of Estate Agent Secrets, but in here, I actually walk uh, agents through the exercise of looking at the quality of the leads that you're getting from the portals, okay, and whether or not they are delivering value for money. Because I would suggest with respect, without knowing all, all of the leads that are coming in and all the rest of it in, in your particular business, but I would suspect that you're probably dealing with 20 or 30 inquiries that lead to nothing for everyone that does, if not more. OK, uh, and I forget the statistics that uh, Christopher Watkin, Watkin uh, quoted when he talked about this previously, but it's something like 80 to 90 percent of all inquiries are uh, buyers or would be buyers, shall we say, looking at what he calls property porn. OK, which is uh, people just looking at houses that they can't afford, but they look nice and they just think, oh, yeah, this is great. But that counts as a hit on you know your properties that you're paying for because all of that's tracked by the you know, software in the back end there. So to, to come full circle to, to your question here, Ian, um, look, you, you guys as, as agents, and I, and I say this a whole, with a whole lot of love and respect, having been there in the position when uh, Rightmove first started and other portals, and to promote that portal, agents put the stickers in the window, they put the name all over the sales details, and they sent a huge amount of traffic week in, week out, year in, year out, decade in, decade out, to that one site, okay? And, you know, you can phone two or three of your competitors right now anonymously, and they'll tell you, you'll describe what you're looking for, and they will more than likely say to you, I'll always keep an eye on you know, this particular portal, because that's where we post all of our properties. And I'm, I'm sitting here going, well, you're just reinforcing the chains that bind you to that particular business, right? You're not happy with the customer experience, you're not happy with the continual price rises, you don't feel it's good value for money, uh, what is what I'm interpreting from your, um, uh, your, your question here in and you're also suggesting to me that actually, you know, you feel like you're being kicked when you're down, because the world is changing, you're getting all, all these uh, extra costs in your business. And now for a, a trusted business to then do this to you, feels like they're kicking you when you're down, right? And so you, you have a choice as to whether or not you choose to employ that uh, product or service in your business. And if you're not exploring alternatives, then again, all you're doing is strengthening the chains that bind you to that business. And what I am seeing to give you hope in is that there are many, 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 many agents online on the social media forums and platforms and all the rest of it that are saying that they have cut ties, they have moved on, and it has made not a jot of difference to their business. Okay, And there's two aspects to this. One is the mental dilemma that agents have, and they, they have this firmly rooted belief that if we're not on this platform, we're going to go out of business, we're going to be slaughtered. And I think that's probably not true for the vast majority of agents. And the second point is that agents say, well, you know, we're being dictated to by our clients that say, if we're not honest, you know, then we're not gonna get that instruction. And, you know, I have to push back on that Ian and say, who's the expert in selling properties here? Is it the homeowner that sat in the same house for 20 years and never moved? 
or is it the person that deals with property sales day in day out and has spent their entire life or career in a state agency you know it, it you, you wouldn't go to the doctor and sit there and they say the doctor says oh well actually i think you need to go for physiotherapy and you, and you say to the doctor you're dead wrong you're absolutely dead wrong there what you what i need is this why go to the bloody doctor in the first place Do you know what i mean that they're, <laughs> they're coming to you as the expert to help them and guide them through the entire moving minefield and ha ha find the right buyer at the right price for their property okay and i think the, the bigger question comes down to you know what is the belief that you have in yourself as the as the best estate agent in your area to achieve the best price for for your clients properties okay and i think if we start the conversation from that point and we actually go back to basics and look at the values that we embody as a business you know, as an estate agent and go, you know, actually, what do we want to deliver? Do we want to do the stack and high, sell and cheap option, which we've has been proven catastrophically not to work in the industry? Okay. And if that was true that, you know, you'd lose instructions because you're not on that particular platform. Well, you know, why is one of the biggest estate agents in the country gone bust as a result of following that strategy? I don't know, something to think about there, right? But you know, go back to basics and look at what you stand for as an agent. Do you want to deliver the very best client experience in selling people's homes? Do you want to get the very best price that you can for people's homes when they come to sell? Do you want to provide the very best hand-holding experience of guiding them through the moving minefield and getting them to where they need to be at the end of it? Okay, if you're sort of ask, answering yes to those questions, then surely it's time to sit down and go, do you know what? Actually, is this approach to our business, is this strategy delivering the results that we want to deliver to our clients? Or are we going to actually become professional estate agents, take a step back, okay, have pride in our business, have pride in ourselves to do a great job for our clients, and we're actually going to take things forward in a new way, which is actually to deliver the customer excellence and the service that you know that you can deliver and you're not going to be dictated to as to where you go to deliver that customer experience. Okay. And, you know, I'm not here to pitch Wiggy Wam to you, Ian, but I would suggest if you haven't done it already, and I don't think you have, but book a demo with me and let me walk you through how Wiggy Wam is changing the game of the house buying and selling process, but also how estate agents go about promoting themselves to their clients. Because I think, you know, we've got a fairly good eye on the future as to where things are going. And what clients are looking for what they're going to be demanding in the future and quite frankly a lot of the service offerings out there as far as the technology goes are completely out of touch with that so if you want to be ahead of the curvy and you know book in a demo with wiggywam go to wiggywam.co.uk click on the book demo button and let's have a conversation because i think it'll absolutely um floor you if you're anything like the demos that i've done over the course of the last couple of weeks with people you're going to sit there and go wow i didn't realize there was all of this going on and most people don't, which is why we need the help and support from people like you in, in getting the word out and getting support for what we're doing to try and help and bolster agents' businesses in these challenging times. So I uh, hope that helps in a lot to unpack in that question. If you want to go back and you know watch this video a couple of times, I think there's you know you're going to get some fairly good uh, nuggets, if you like, of, of knowledge and information that you can apply to your business. Uh, if you need any help on this, I would suggest you reach out to people like Chris Arnold, uh, James Cocker, and also uh, Michelle Smith, who are in the industry right now, who are all about agents become the very best that they can be, all about embodying the story that only you can tell, and all about promoting yourselves in a way that doesn't tie yourself to uh, you know, a, a behemoth in the industry if I can put it that way. All right, and so uh, wishing the best of luck with that. If we can do anything else to help you, let me know. Uh, but failing that, we'll move on to question number three. All right, uh, question number three comes in here from uh, Brian. Hi there, Brian. Thank you for being part of the amazing Wigiwam community. Uh, Brian's question is, uh, I'm having trouble standing out from other agents in my area. Uh, when I look at what we're doing compared to everyone else, uh, we seem to be all about the same with the only difference being fees, although I do have more experience than most agents in my area. How can I differentiate myself and win more business? Okay, there, Brian, well, that's a great question. Thank you for sending that one in. Um, and, and this is something that I, I love sort of getting into with agents because the unfortunate part about it is, um, I think over the course of the last sort of 20 years, and I was actually speaking to a number of other agents who have left the uh, industry um, and, and, you know, that I was working with some years prior, 
And they have all noticed a similar sort of pattern to what I've noticed, which is the adverse impact, if you like, of the uh, portals in the uh, marketplace, and particularly over the course of the last 12 years, as the market's been reasonably good, there has been a relaxation in the standards of a state agency. Okay, now think back to sort of 20 plus years ago, we used to have a hot box, right? We used to protect that hot box with their life. We used to guard it. And uh, we, some of people used to take it home with us at the end of the night. And it, it was a an incredible tool that you used to embody and embrace the very essence of what a state agency is. Okay, and that is all about delivering customer excellence. It's about those touch points with the customer. It's that nurture process that you're going through with them. You know, when they've come in to register with you, you're out there to try and find them the right home for them, but you're also talking to the sellers on a fairly regular basis and helping to guide them towards where they want to be. Okay. And now we've gone through this technological revolution. You know, we put everything out there online. We've got our phones that don't stop bloody ringing or, you know, messages, calls, texts, all that sort of thing coming through. And unfortunately, that has just brought about a commoditization of. Uh, a lot of things, not just a state agency, but also conveyancing, um, also in, in a large respect, uh, things like uh, surveying, et cetera, et cetera. And the, the problem is, is that once everything's commoditized, then you just end up going back to the common denominator, which is price, right? So if, if, if we're all doing pretty much the same, we're all posting on the same online spaces, um, we're all operating the same area with the same buyers and the same sellers, then surely then price wins, right? And it's actually the wrong thinking. And, and, and what we should be doing, Brian, is actually going the other way and going, do you know what? What can I do to enhance the customer experience so that I'm able to put, position myself in a category of one? Okay, I'm differentiating myself from other people in the industry. Okay, and I'm now going to set my stall out and provide such an exclusive customer service and a customer experience that I can charge handsomely for it. Okay, that is something to think about, Brian. How do you how do you get to that point? Now, for anybody who needs some guidance and support on this, I highly, highly, highly recommend reading the book Purple Cow by Seth Godin. Okay, an interesting title for a book. But certainly, if you imagine looking at a field of black and white heifers out there, and then you see this purple cow standing there, who is your eye going to be drawn towards? Okay. And it's not to suggest you need to change your brand colors, okay, or certainly don't need any uh, agricultural um, uh, references in your business to adopt this uh, strategy. But the whole point of looking at the uh, purple cow book is that Seth gives many, many, many examples of how industries in particularly heavily commoditized markets like salt or like shampoo okay where they were able to branch out and create a, a niche for themselves which is based around being able to charge a premium for what is essentially perceived as a similar product to everybody else's okay and the the shame in a state agency is that you know i i love property as a business okay i love estate agency as a business okay I think it is one of the greatest privileges, and I use that word, you know, purposely, it is the greatest privilege that you're able to go out and support a client in realizing their hopes and dreams of their, you know, move and, and think about the impact that you have on that person's life. Okay, you help somebody move, they could, you could be the, the, the uh, catalyst to create 10, 15, 20 years of very happy memories in their new home okay just think about that for a second okay and think about the experience of going to buy a car okay as a parallel and you go to one of these you know car supermarket places you could go there for example or if you were to step into a rolls royce dealership okay if you step into a rolls royce dealership is it not highly likely that the level of service and experience will be so different different to the car supermarket place okay absolutely and and i was just speaking to to a lady called michelle smith earlier and she used the reference of the supermarkets okay if you look at what the supermarkets are doing you had the the, the big three if you like you had uh, uh, tesco sainsbury's and and, and uh, asda 
all kind of competing on the battlefield. And then Aldi and Lidl came into the marketplace. And a lot of their adverts now, the differentiating factor for Tesco, Asda and you know Sainsbury's is to price match to bloody Aldi and Lidl, okay? Where's the sense in that? There's nowhere to go as a business if you're going to start competing on price because ultimately you're either you know getting people through the door with those what we call loss leaders in the industry and then ripping them off on the other stuff which will completely alienate the clients over the long term anyway or you enter into the price war and the consumer wins but there's no loyalty okay and that's one of the things i think you, you need to look at fostering brian there's a couple of aspects to this and it's the top and the tail if you like of the housing transaction the, the, the top being the nurture process that you're embracing clients into your business, okay? Many, many, many agents, and we, we've just released a guide about this, Brian, so if you want to know more, let me know, but many, many, many agents only focus on the top 3% of uh, people who are likely to move in the course of the next 12 months. Why? Because there's an immediate return on investment, okay? Market to that property, win the instruction, okay, job done, we, we can eat this month, right? But what about the other 97% of people in an area that, you know, aren't being nurtured, aren't being talked to, aren't being engaged with, that will at some point over the course of the next one, two, three, four, five years, put their house up for sale, okay? Now, how do you get in front of them early enough on in the process, okay, so that they can then have a better experience of you as the expert in the industry and then start... Uh, you know, engaging with you to the point where it comes to sell their property, there's no other choice in the marketplace other than you. Okay. And that requires the only way I know how to do it is through providing valuable content to your local marketplace. Now, whether that is in the form of uh, an email newsletter once a week, whether it's a form of TikTok, Facebook, social media videos, et cetera, et cetera, uh, whether that is in the form of blogs another stuff that you're starting to put out there, whether that's in the form if you're writing your own book, okay, and getting that out there, sharing your experiences and all the rest of it, which is, you know, think about that as a nurture, as a nurturing campaign in itself within a book with a call to action to it, okay, come and talk to me about your, your property move, et cetera, et cetera. How about being able to demonstrate all the years of experience and the situations that you've got yourself into or you've helped clients get out of as a result of the work that you do, okay? Who? Let me ask you, who is gonna throw that book away if they've either come into your office and bought it and paid good money for it, or has been you've been gracious enough to grant them with a copy of your book, okay, as part of the valuation process, because they might not move for two years. We know that you might not move for two years. You know what, here's a copy of my book, have a little read of that, keep it as your reference manual, all the rest of it, what a way to sell your services that will keep on selling long after you know you've closed the door behind you to that client's property okay so that's the top which is the nurture process and on the back end or the tail if you like once you've sold the property what are you doing to then generate leads okay off the back of the referral mechanism of a satisfied and happy client okay and most agents, in my experience, miss out tremendously on the back end. They, they lose the power of testimonials because they don't collect them. They move, lose the power of referrals because they don't ask for them. Or they don't incentivize their clients enough to actually bring the referrals to them. Okay. So those are a couple of ideas to play with, Brian. If you want to sit down and strategize some time, more than happy to. My diary is open. If you want to see how we UM can support you in that journey, we'd love to help you and, and, and get you uh, on board as a client and guide you through that process. It's not going to cost you a fortune. We're here to support and serve. All you need to do, go to wigiwam.co.uk and click the book demo button now. Book in a, a date and the time that's convenient for you and we'll have a chat. And uh, I think you'll be pleasantly surprised how we can help you put yourself into a category of one and really just you know tell the story that you can tell and only you can tell as far as helping other people. All right. So good luck with that, Brian. Hope that's helped to answer the question. Uh, if you're in any doubt whatsoever as to how to differentiate yourself or why you'd need to differentiate yourself, one of the best exercises to do as an agent is to go and visit a different town or city in the UK, 
go and visit three estate agents and talk to them about what they do to sell people's properties. And you'll come back and you'll go, okay, they're all the same. And, you know, then you can start to create a better framework around your business as to how you're ultimately going to serve. Okay. So good luck with that, Brian. Let me know if you need anything else and I'll be happy to serve. Thank you so much. Uh, moving on to question number four here from uh, Kerry. Hi there, Kerry. Thank you for being part of the amazing Wigiwam community and for submitting your question to us. Uh, so Kerry says, uh, I've just received an offer on my property, but my buyers are in a chain and their buyer is experiencing some delays. Uh, I'm worried that the whole chain will collapse and I'll have to start the selling process all over again. Is there anything I can do to prevent this? Okay, well, there, Kerry, well, thank you for your question. And uh, you're sorry to hear that you're in that sort of precarious situation or whether you're wondering, uh, you know, the, this sale that you've agreed, is it going to fall through? And is there going to be the sort of fallout, if you like, of all the other consequences as a result of that? Um, so first things first, I would uh, talk to your estate agent in depth about getting to the root cause of the problem. OK, it's very difficult to diagnose a problem, you know, if you don't know actually what's what's going on. Um, and what I mean by that is, is there something going on with your uh, buyer's sale? OK, that is causing these delays. Is it their buyer getting cold feet? Is it their buyer thinks that they've overpaid for the property, which could be a possibility? Are they getting nervous because interest rates have risen and all the rest of it? And the point of doing this exercise is, <clears throat> excuse me, it's getting to some common ground as to whether or not there is a uh, some wiggle room, if you like, to turn this situation around and get things moving. Now, that might be a, a situation where a little bit of a price change might help to oil the wheels of the deal and get things moving along towards a, an exchange of contracts. I know that's not ideal, but the reason I mention it, Kerry, is because so many pro properties... Uh, you know, are falling through at the moment because buyers are nervous about price. They still like the property, they still want the property, but they're reflecting on, you know, what my, my cost of my mortgage has just gone up a couple of percent. Um, I'm paying this for the next 25 years. I'm a little bit concerned about how things are going to unfold over the course of the next uh, several months or years. Um, and they're, they're kind of getting cold feet. So if you can all agree in the chain to a slight price reduction, like it might be five grand, all right? I don't know the value of your property, Kerry, um, but talk to your estate agent because they're the ones with the experience. And for anybody you know watching this who wonders whether or not estate agency is really easy to do, all right, and wonders what actually estate agents do to sell properties, this is one of the major roles, and this is where you find the uh, separating the wheat from the chaff brings very, very, very different results as far as this sort of a situation is concerned. Okay, because has that has your agent now got the skills and and the confidence to navigate what could be a potentially precarious situation okay have the, can they approach the other agents in the chain and try and work with them to come up with ideas that will keep this whole deal together and move it further forward you know it could be that there's job uncertainty in the background it could be uh, you know i don't know a uh, family member isn't particularly well or any number of other things. But the point is, until you get to the root cause of the problem, it's very diffi difficult to diagnose what's actually going on. Okay, so that would be my first step. Second step for you, Kerry, would be to do what I would call uh, on the quiet marketing. Again, that's why you want to refer back to your bar to your uh, state agent, sorry, and suggest that, you know, we're not getting very far here, you've got your concerns, we're exploring option A, which is can we get this uh, chain situation resolved and all the delays wiped out and then move forward to a sale? If not, do we then go down the road of quiet marketing where we're talking to other people that have viewed the property, we're quietly marketing it with a view to saying, well, if this falls through, we've actually got somebody in reserve now who will step into the breach and buy the property. Okay, so that would give you a little bit of comfort as far as uh, you know, getting your property sale complete as soon as possible. Now, there is a third thing, Karen. It might be a bit late for where you are in the transaction, um, but depends on you know wh where you are. You may or may not be able to take advantage of it now. If not, you can certainly take advantage of it. One, you know, if this sale falls through, God forbid, you can then put it uh, on stream for the next sale. 
but it's what we call our protect your pocket policy okay it's a it's an insurance indemnity uh, product that actually underwrites the cost of moving home effectively so uh, if this sale collapses the likelihood is you could be out of pocket paying out for surveys valuation fees uh, solicitors fees searches and god knows what else right now the whole idea of the protect your pocket policy is that once you've taken if, if you've taken it out before you've instructed solicitors then you know everything that you've spent out can be recovered you know within the terms of the policy which saves you being out of pocket hence the phrase protect your pocket right um and i think it's a, it's an absolute godsend because you know one in three deals will fall through right now and that will leave the buyer and the seller up to three thousand pounds out of pocket okay and the policies will underwrite you to that amount if you want to so if that sounds of interest kerry let me know more than happy to support you in that journey send me an email happy to help at wiggywam.co.uk that's happy to help at wiggywam.co.uk all right uh put protect your pocket policy in the subject line there and i'll more than happily guide you through where i think things are at okay but i think that those are the important three steps that i would take uh in your situation Kerry, because you've got to get things moving and as i say you're sitting there in the dark and you don't necessarily know what's going on so let's get to the root of the problem and then once that's you know diagnosed you can then make an appropriate plan of action to move forward okay so i hope that helps Kerry. let me know if there's anything else i can do to support you and uh, wishing you the very best of luck all right moving on our uh, question number five is coming in in here from michael hi there michael thank you for being part of the amazing wiki one community and for submitting your question uh, michael says uh, as an agent i'm struggling to sell properties now that the market has slowed down in our area uh, it seems the usual methods aren't quite working the way they used to. Uh, so my question is, what can I do to increase interests, increase interest, sorry, and drive sales? Well, that's a great question, Michael. Thank you for uh, sending that one in. And again, you have my empathy that uh, you know things are changing in the marketplace right now and changing quite quickly, which is putting buyers uh, in a nervous state and consequently causing them to sit on their hands. Okay, so. There are a number of things that you can do, uh, Michael, as an agent to get out there and start promoting these pro properties. Uh, one of the key things that everybody looks at, of course, and it goes without saying, properties need to be priced correctly. OK, now that market of price, it whatever you want to, and the market will decide has gone um, because the market decides anyway. But it's just how quickly uh, the market decides for you. Right. And in this situation. What you're doing is you're putting properties on the marketplace so you know there's less interest okay so do you then decide to price it really competitively competitively in a view to getting a couple of people chasing it and driving the price up is that is that the strategy that will work in your area i don't know it's worth worth you know checking or the other alternative is that you you know get those properties at priced either when you're valuing them or when they're on the market you drop the price to put them in alignment with a price that's fair for those particular properties. Now, this is the time where I think agents are going to have to start to work a lot harder for the pound shillings and pence that their clients are paying them, which is also why I believe that they should be paid more, but it's up to the agent to ask for more money as a result of the fee that they're charging to sell the houses, right? And this is where you have to be far more proactive in terms of, you know, is the property... Uh, listed on all of your social media platforms is it going out to your email database okay are you sending details to people that have registered on your list and, and that you know aren't receiving emails um does the front of the property need professional photography does it need a hanging basket outside of it does it need to change the name of the property okay in order to create more of an ambience about what you're actually selling okay when i was first introduced to that strategy by uh, an estate agent colleague of mine I'll be honest, I thought the guy was absolutely barking mad. Okay. I, I just thought you can't just put a name on a property. Okay. And he assured me that actually, yes, you could. And I looked at it and I thought, do you know what? This might actually have some merit. And we looked at it from a point of view of, you know, initially selling properties that were number 13 put some buyers off, right? So what about giving the house a name? Primrose Cottage, you know. Um, or, or whatever else it might be, um, that you you give that property an, an, an extra level of appeal. And this worked particularly well in our area because we were selling a lot of cottage properties. So um, number 41 became Paradise Cottage, okay? 
uh, very, very different feel and a different setup in the mind of the potential buyer when they're going to look at Paradise Cottage compared to number 41. Oh, where do you live? Oh, I live at number 41. Oh, I live at Paradise Cottage. Thank you very much. Okay, so you, you can see where I'm kind of going with that, but you can have some fun with this for marketing purposes that you are uh, helping switch a, a, a put it, well, sw flick a switch, if you like, in the buyer's mind to create more desire about where they want to live and the type of properties they're going, they're going to live in. So that might be professional photographies. It might be a coat of paint on the front of the property. It might be gardening and all the rest of it to, to tidy up the front elevation so that you're getting better shots. Okay, it might be a tidy up internally. And this comes down to, again, to brutal, honest advice. Does the property need a lick of paint in order to make it feel fresh and all the rest of it? And is there an angle where you can support the seller in the sale of their home by fronting some of the capital to help get the property into tip top condition ready for sale. Okay, again, something to think about. There was an agent I spoke to recently as well, who's exploring a lot of the online modern method of auction routes to look at selling properties that way. And again, that could be actually quite a useful strategy for some sellers. And I'm not gonna say for all of them, but for some of them. And I think the key point I'm trying to get to here uh, Michael, is that you, you're never going to twist a buyer's arm into buying something that they don't like, okay? But what you can do is to create or more desire around the properties that you're selling in order to attract more buyer interest initially so that they do eventually, you know, fall in love with it and proceed to buy, okay? So that's definitely what I would suggest that you do. The other thing you've got to think about, Michael, and this is the big one, okay? This is where the biggest change in the market is coming and it's it's already here but agents and solicitors don't necessarily quite realize it is that you are going to spend a lot more time marketing these properties to end up with a situation in a buyer's market where there's more uncertainty and if something else comes along that might attract the buyer's interest your buyer might jump horses and you're left without the buyer but a disappointed seller and more frustrated because you've got to spend out more money on your marketing in order to attract a buyer. So the biggest change is going to be, Michael, absolutely hammering the time scale from when the offer is accepted to when contracts exchange. And the only way agents are going to do this is through things like a seller's pack and ordering the searches in advance to help their clients. And then people say to me, Silas, we can't do that. We can't order the searches in advance. Yes, you can. Okay. But not the traditional way. You have to do it the wiggy one way, right? Which is to order what we call the twin search approach. It's no more expensive than normal searches, but it splits the searches up into two lots. So you get the bulk of the information up front when it comes to selling the property. That goes in the seller's pack. So your buyer is more informed and the legals can start a lot sooner in the process. Okay. And it's also going to weed out you know, who the serious sellers are and who who are not, right? But also, once the sale has been agreed and solicitors are instructed, you then get the balance of the variable information that changes. But the point is, everything's all up front. So, you know, this whole deal can motor through as quickly as possible. That is key, Michael. If you're not doing that in your business, and if you're an estate agent, you're watching this video, and you're not doing that in your business, that's where you're going to come unstuck, in my humble opinion, as this market gets tougher over the next couple of years. And we're here to revolutionize that in complete change in the marketplace. We're here to support you as agents implementing that straight away so that you can condense that time frame and actually make things work you know, much faster in your business. So your turnover of cash and your pipeline is so much better and therefore your profitability is so much higher. All right, but nothing will change unless you make that change, Michael. All right, so hope that helps. If you need anything else uh, as a support uh, in that, then let me know. I'd be more than happy to sit down and have a chat with you. Again, if you want some uh, time with me as to find out how Wigiwam can help you with your business, just go to wigiwam.co.uk, click that book, dem book demo button, okay? And uh, book in for some time and space for you and I to sit and chat. And I'll tell you exactly what we're doing and how that can help you with your business. All right. Wishing you the best of luck with that, Michael. Uh, let me know if we can help anyone any more. All right, moving on. And uh, question uh, number six here from Pippa. Hi there, Pippa. Thank you for being part of the amazing WeHeWen community and for sending in your question. So Pippa says, uh, I'm a landlord and my tenants are behind on their rent payments. 
Uh, I've tried talking to them, but they keep making excuses and I'm not sure how to proceed. What are my options for recovering the rent owed and more importantly, getting my property back if we've got to kick them out? All right there, Pippa. Well, really sorry to hear that you're in that situation. And uh, I know it's no comfort, but you're not on your own because I'm seeing this more and more now with uh, a lot of uh, landlords in different social media groups and, and all the rest of it who are discussing the impact that it's having on their business where tenants are losing their job or for whatever reason they're just not paying rent and the difficulties they're experiencing not just getting possession of the property but the state of the property is in once they've actually got it back and a lot of landlords are just saying you know what, i've had enough let me sell this i'm out of the marketplace and that's what's driving a lot of change now i don't want to give you the worst case scenario here pippa but uh, what i am going to suggest it sounds to me like you're not employing an agent to actually help you uh, manage the tenant uh, landlord relationship there, um, you know, which is by the by, obviously that's retrospective, we can't do anything about that now. But what I am gonna suggest that you do is that you go back to, uh, well, let's go onto social media and start to, to look in some of the landlord forums. There are many, many common names that are, that are mentioned over and over again in terms of support with getting a, a tenant evicted from the property that's the first and foremost most important point and the reason i'm directing you to those specialists is because the uh the eviction process has become so much more complicated and so much more fraught with danger that if you get it wrong as i'm seeing landlords trying to do it on their own are getting it wrong they go to court they've got all the costs of actually getting to court they've got the cost of a hearing and then if the tenant uh knows how to play the game they get the case thrown out or they get things delayed until such point as the landlord's then got to go back to court again, bear all the costs of going to court, pay for the court hearing, et cetera, et cetera. Um, basically, it's a bit of a money drain for anybody, any tenant that knows what they're doing. And that's what they'll do is they'll keep stalling and keep stalling. You're getting less and less uh, rent or no rent at all coming in. But you keep paying out every single month in terms of, you know, the monthly rental payments, et cetera, sorry, uh, uh, monthly uh, mortgage payments, et cetera. And ultimately, that equation doesn't work very long. Okay, so it, it is a definite one where you need some professional support. Um, I'll have a dig around and see if I can find out one or two names for you, Pip, and I'll, I'll send them across to you. Um, but my difficulty is having not worked with them directly myself. Uh, I, I feel like it's not quite a, tr a true recommendation, if that makes sense. I mean, uh, Paul Champolina from Landlord Action, he was one of the uh, biggest players in the game in terms of helping uh, landlords to get back possession of their properties. But there are other names there as well. As I say, I encourage you to join a couple of the social media groups, uh, get those experts uh, contact details or ask the questions in those social media groups, and you'll get some uh, interesting recommendations based on uh, landlords that have actually used them and they've got results, okay, which is which is most important in this sort of uh, scenario. All right, Pepper. so uh, I would suggest, you know, wise words of advice, don't try and do this on your own get some professional support. It might be a little bit more of a cost initially, but I think it'll save you a lot of uh, time, effort, headaches, and cost uh, on the back end rather than trying to do it yourself and getting it wrong. Okay, so wishing you the best of luck with that, Pepper. Let me know if there's anything else that I can do to help. Uh, of course, uh, but I'm, I'm hoping that you get your property back sooner rather than later um, or your tenants uh, actually correct the uh, situation. Uh, maybe you've got a guarantor in place that you can call upon to uh, cover the... Uh, uh, rent that you haven't yet received and that might just put things into balance again um, and hopefully it'll be a blip rather than actually an ongoing thing but if you've got to go down the nuclear option if you like of, of getting them out of the property then it's so important to get some professional guidance all right Pippa. so wishing you the best of luck with that let me know if there's anything else i can do to help all right ladies and gentlemen well that brings the end of today's webinar to an end uh, thank you so much indeed for joining me as always i've really enjoyed doing these uh, webinars uh, every single week we're here to support you as much as possible i know times are testing i know times are challenging if you are struggling in your business right now and you don't know who to talk to respectfully i'm going to suggest that you reach out to me uh, and let me give you the benefit of some experience let me show you how we can support you in a way that's either cost neutral or, or will actually produce a profit in your business by working alongside WiggyWan. We're here, to, as I say, to help and support. I'll do as much as I possibly can, as I have been doing for the agents that have come on board and solicitors that have uh, been working with us recently. Uh, you'd be amazed at what we're actually giving away 
uh, to help and support them in their business. So uh, please do reach out to us. Uh, you can do that via our website, which is uh, wiggywam.co.uk. Uh, there's a book demo button. Click that. Book yourself in an appointment at a time that's convenient for you. Uh, we'll then have a chat and I'll show you exactly what's going on. Uh, I don't do the whole high pressure sales nonsense because I've you know, experienced too much of that in the past and I've done too much of that in the past, if I'm honest. Um, it'll just be a straightforward chat. You tell me what, what you're struggling with. I'll guide you through what I think the solutions are. I'll show you how we can help you or I will guide you to the right people if I think I can't help you, which I think is invaluable in today's market, if I do say so myself. And, uh, you know, if we can work together, if we can genuinely help and support you, then we'll welcome you on board in a way that I think will be very different to other experiences that you've had uh, in the industry so far. So uh, that's my offer to you. Free guidance and advice and support and a nice little chat, uh, along with what I think will be um, a very different uh, kind of working relationship than you're used to in the marketplace. All right. So uh, if you want to reach out to me, uh, say go to the website, wiggywam.co.uk. Uh, you can book a demo on that uh, website there, or you can send us a question through to our email address, which is happy to help at wiggywam.co.uk. That's happy to help at wiggywam.co.uk. Or you can go to our Twitter uh, handle, which is uh, at wiggywam underscore UK. So that's at wiggywam underscore UK. And you can tweet us there or send us a message via Twitter. And we will be delighted to answer your questions in the future. All right, so that's it for me, guys. Thank you so much indeed for joining me. I look forward to welcoming you on another webinar in the future very soon. You take care. God bless. Bye-bye.